typical day for me has changed a lot over the last year. I mean, obviously just retiring from uh, the Sports Supercross and here on the Geico Honda team. I mean, now it's learning how to work my DVR, you know, catching up on my Oprah, a little bit of Bachelor, things like that. I mean, that's really kind of what I do. Although I really do like to watch uh, the Fox Sports uh, show there with the Supercross and uh, try to adapt, you know. It's, it's tough for me right now. I'm in a weird place, but catching up on my TV and, and watching my teammates and cheering them on and hoping they go for the win. You know, for, for, as an amateur racer, I mean, I, I didn't think a lot about being a professional. So for me, it was just, this is kind of your home away from home, right? I mean, I had that family that you would go and hang out with and you would see, they may be from Florida, you meet at this random race, me being from Louisiana. Uh, that was really a lot of fun. And looking back on it, I think, you know, just to be able to spend that time with your family. I mean, that's an amazing opportunity. Uh, even if you don't make it to the professional, and for me it was just a building block for an amazing career. I mean, uh, 20 years now in the professional, it's, it's kind of fairy tale. Um, I've been able to do some amazing things, and the fact that most of those revolve around a dirt bike, extraordinary. Uh, man, on the track, there's, there's so much that can happen. And you know, a lot of my team, the Geico team, will look at me for like a, a advice. But you know, when that gate drops, it's straight insanity. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, and that's the thing that I think draws, you know, the sellout crowds to some of these events. And, and even watching as a fan now, and and trying to analyze all that's going on. There's so many moving parts to the sport, of Supercross, and even motocross, and all that goes on. So, um, I mean, it gets pretty cutthroat out there. I mean, if you don't win, you're, you're against your toughest competitor, head to head, face to face. And look, it gets cutthroat, man. You're, you lose that race, they're taking money out of your pocket, they're taking a trophy off your case, and uh, you know, anything that can happen once the gate drops. Well, you know, there's uh, Rob Geiger with uh, Geiger Media Group who wouldn't qualify if he wasn't standing right beside me right now, but you, you know what, for me, uh, there's, there's, there's so many things that the guys now, watching as a fan, bring to the sport. There's so many different, uh, and I'm dodging your question, right? Because there's so many different mentalities and so many different characteristics of these riders that I think they all bring an important mix. But for me growing up, I mean, I, I loved uh, watching, um, heck, I raced them, but I liked watching McGrath, um, even uh, Emig, and then into uh, Jeff Ward, uh, Rick Johnson. I mean, all those guys were really influential in me in the late 80s, uh, even some in the mid 80s. Uh, caught the tail end of Bob Hurricane Hannah's career, which was absolutely amazing. And uh, like I said, that, that's kind of what, what drives you. I mean, you're sitting in the, you're sitting in the stands and, and to know that you want that, but to actually see it come through, through all the steps and the processes to make it into the sport, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable to go through all those steps. But, um, you know, the guys that are out here tonight are doing that for kids in the stands. There's people that are here that are gonna be on this track in, in 10, 15 years. And that's what's so unique about the sport of motocross supercross. Well, I'm a prime example of what I would be doing if I was not racing motorcycles because I pretty much dedicated a life to it. I was there before, I was there during, obviously, and now it's after, and I'm kind of like, you know, kind of trying to shake me away with a stick, but I don't want to go anywhere. I'm trying to stay involved with the Geico Honda team. I'm talking about the competition as, you know, I was one of the last guys to race with them and can actually try to bring that experience to the fans, and that's a lot of fun, but uh, you're not going to shake me away, man. It's a lifelong passion for me, and. Uh, it consumes me, so I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Like a dog hump on a leg, you can't, sh can't shake him off. <laughs> oh, you know, it was probably for me the one race that I would do over would be Houston uh, 2012. It was the start of my retirement, although I didn't know it at the time. I took a really hard crash, uh, had a concussion, uh, separated my shoulder broke uh, two bones in my wrist and had some pretty major internal bleeding. And it was the start of a snowball thing that really sprung on a retirement. Uh, you know, at 35, uh, at the time I was 34, and now soon to be 36, you, you look through things through different eyes and it's hard to put those traumatic experiences behind you. Had I been able to stay on two wheels, I might be standing here talking to you as a racer today versus, you know, a fan and a, a retired athlete. There's a handful, and it's hard to really go into, into one because, I mean, I, having 200 plus starts in Supercross plus all the outdoors, there was opportunities for me to race in the motocross to nations, which was really special because that's the best, the three best from every country, and to be able to win, I think really validates a, 
a country. I mean, I don't think we have any question about America because so many riders come from all over the world to race here. But that was one. A USGP on, on uh, a GP on American soil was another. An East-West shootout with uh, the great Ricky Carmichael back in 1997 when we were both on 125s before we went to the, two, uh, the four strokes. And um, any one of my wins, especially the ones that were really close to home where you could have all your friends and family to be a part of it and be there and, and help celebrate with you. But to win, I mean, you're racing the best in the world. To win in this sport, anytime you, you hold that number one, you know, the, the, the first place trophy, shake the champagne, doesn't get a lot better than that. Oh man, there's so many bad dudes walking around this pit. The baddest dude, the straight up baddest dude I know on a motorcycle would probably be someone like, um, somebody like that you wouldn't even know of, like a Billy Leninovich that, you know, so, such a great free rider, or, or people that, there's so many guys that are so tech that just didn't go in that racing thing. I mean, these guys here, it's amazing. You take a guy and they'll self you know, they'll, they'll say this themselves. You got like a, going way back in the day, a Jeff Stanton or a Ricky Carmichael or those guys. They weren't necessarily the most gifted people, but they worked their ass off, and that's how they got to where they are. And uh, there's other guys, you know, that are just super tech. I, I think that I was one of those guys that I'd never vote my, for myself for the favorite rider, so I might be on everyone else's list. Uh, but you know, there's there's some talented guys out there doing some amazing stuff on motorcycles. You know, right now I feel like I we could go against any of them because it was the ones that I raced against when you think about the greatest of all time with Ricky Carmichael and you think of the King Jeremy McGrath I mean those two really did a lot for the sport and elevating it and I think those days of when I was that era of when I was racing was really truly one of the toughest but I think it would be fun to go back against any one of those guys and line them all up on a gate and, and let it drop and take everybody at their strengths and their weaknesses and go go do battle um, with that said I, I feel like I've raced against the toughest people in the world some of the baddest dudes ever